Okay, everybody, we're going to start off with our lightning talk round. Um, these talks will be 10 minutes each with about five minutes for questions. You can ask your questions right after each lightning talk. You don't have to wait till the end of the session. Um, our first uh, speaker will be Jake Carlson. Um, Jake is here um, with us from, I think it'll just pop okay. up, uh, <laughs> University of Michigan, um, where he is research data services manager. And he's here today to talk to us about um, data curation networks. So please welcome Jake. And um, our next speaker, Rick, will help you get queued up. All right. So thanks, uh, Natalie. Um, my name is Jake Carlson. I'm from the University of Michigan, as uh, Natalie mentioned. Um, I'm here representing the Data Curation Network. Um, and because I have very little time, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, libraries are increasingly supporting data curation services. We uh, did a spec uh, kit for ARL that should be released um, any week or so now. And of the 80 responses, we had 56 people saying that they were either doing this or planning to do it very soon and 46 um, indicated they had a repository that accepted research data, uh, a repository of some kind that accepted research data. Um, and we offer various services as a part of this, again, from the spec kit. Uh, we offer traditional sort of curation type things that you think with libraries, metadata, downloading files, uh, persistent identifiers and such. Uh, we offer fewer in terms of the more advanced things that I think would be of particular interest to data. So quality assurance, there's only 23 or so who said they offer some form of quality assurance. Uh, software registry, again, was particularly slim in terms of just six people uh, provide that. Um, so uh, different types of services are uh, provided as part of our uh, data curation um, programs in libraries. Um, but the library services that we offer may not be fully connecting with researcher needs. So another activity that we did as part of the data curation uh, network planning grant is to pull together engagement activities where we got people together and we asked them, how important is a particular curation activity for you? We had 36 different ones for them to choose. And are you doing these particular creation activities, either yourself or having a third party do it for you? And if you are doing it or having somebody do it for you, how satisfied are you with the results? And so this box here indicates level of importance. Uh, these are the ones that really sort of uh, came up as, as very high. But for some folks, these are not happening. So persistent identifier as being very important only happens for 37% of the folks. Software registries are very important. It only happens for 41% of folks uh, and so on down the line. And other folks indicated that these things were happening, but they weren't terribly satisfied with the outcomes. And what really stood out to me as a librarian is documentation and metadata are things that they're doing or they're endeavoring to do, but they're not terribly happy with, their, with the outcomes of the results, which to me indicates we have some opportunity here to provide some targeted services to really make these things happen. Um, also, the data curation that we do, it may be more than one library it can actually support. So another activity that we did was to kind of do an inventory of the data sets that the six members have collected thus far in our repositories, and we indicated the level of curation activity that the data set we thought required and what we were able to provide uh, in our library. You can see there's a real big disconnect here between about half the data sets or so that we get in, we think need some major work but we're only able to give major work for 41 of those. And similarly, um, for, for uh, on the none category, there were seven data sets total that came in that really were, were pretty good as, as they were. They didn't need a whole lot of work, but there were 32 times where we weren't able to, to do much in the way of curation activities for one reason or another. So there's some disconnects in terms of what's needed versus what we're currently able to provide collectively. And then, a one particular issue that we found is current staffing levels. So I, at the University of Michigan, I have one person reporting to me, our data curation librarian, and she's great, but she is one person. Most of the services that we have from the six member institutions thus far are cobbled together from various positions. So we have different people devoting part of their time to curation, but it's not a full focus for much of anybody. We also have different levels of expertise and different types of formats and different types of disciplines. And uh, those don't necessarily match up or they're not necessarily complete in terms of what we'd like to be able to offer. And so we intend to build a data curation network. Libraries have a long history of doing similar things, but doing them in isolation as silos. We think that's kind of a dumb way to go about curation. So given the need, given our resources or constraints on resources, and given the variety of expertise that are both needed and available, 
why not do this collectively? Why not try to build together a network where if I, if I have a data set that I can't curate for whatever reason, can I give it to the University of Minnesota to curate on my behalf? And similarly, if they have a data set that they need curated that we have expertise and time for, can they give that to us to curate as a result as well? So really what we're trying to do is bridge the gaps of providing and scaling data curation services. And we have four desired outcomes uh, for the particular project. We really want to develop standards-driven data curation techniques for all types of repository workflows and infrastructure. One of the things that we did was to uh, uh, curate a data set collectively. So we, we chose one data set and had uh, curators at six different institutions look at it and say, how would we curate this? And we each came up with a different process and a different way to curate it. And that's not bad, it's just different. Are there things that, when we say we curate a data set, what does that actually mean? And can we start to develop not just standards for doing that, but operational practices? What does it mean to curate a data set as a part of this network? We really want to expand our institution, uh, our, our network rather, to grow beyond our initial six partners. We really want this to be a collective thing that we're all working together to share and to develop expertise in. We want data sets that are curated by the data curation network to advance research. We can do these things and curate data, but without impact and meaning and value, what's the point? Can we demonstrate that impact? Can we show the value for people uh, of data sets that are curated by this network? And then finally, we really want to build an innovative community. We really want this to take root in libraries and other, other places to advance the cause of open data and open science. And so these are pictures of our project team. We're being led by Lisa Johnston at the University of Minnesota, uh, Michigan's participant, Penn State, Washington, St. Louis, University of Illinois, Cornell are, are all members. But again, we're looking to expand once we get our implementation grant up and going. Um, our website is uh, listed there. Uh, we have a number of different uh, publications and reports based on the work that we've done that I've covered very, very quickly. So if you're interested in more information, please do take a look. Our Twitter handle is Data Creation Network, and we are funded, the planning grant that we have now is funded by the Alfred Sloan Foundation. Any questions? So tell us more about if you wanted to be one of those next wave of institutions, what would you be? Yeah, so at the moment, we're not ready for that. Um, we are in a planning grant. We are turning planning into implementation, and we'll have some kind of process or uh, procedure in place once we get going with that. But in the meantime, please do let us know if you're interested. We're always interested in sort of putting out who's out there who might be working with us. Ruth. Um, so what's your interface to like the, the main repository? Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, we don't have a direct interface right now. This is a planning grant. Um, so we're still sort of figuring out what would make sense for us to, to work through. But we think that's a very important relationship. And that's something we certainly want to connect with folks. We've had interest from ICPSR in terms of trying to connect with them. Um, Data Dryad has also expressed interest in, in working with us. Um, I think we both have roles to play in terms of institutional repositories and domain repositories. Um, domain repositories are obviously, you know, uh, have a pretty rich uh, depth of expertise and their discipline and the particular formats that are generated in discipline. Whereas institutional repositories, we're able to better put boots on the ground. We are provisioned in libraries to go out and to connect with different researchers who are generating the data sets. And we have the time and capacity to go sit with them and work with them and help them prepare their data for deposits. So uh, I think there are ways to partner and to look at how do we build a, a, a productive relationship, but we haven't gotten that far in terms of actually producing um, a way to, to do that. Yes. So that, that's a follow up on that then is uh, your connection with the researchers is something you're including as part of the planning as well then, mostly for institutional repositories or are you, is that part of the process as well in terms of educating the researcher in entering up that planning that yeah, I, I think um, we're more focused on building the network itself rather than people's connections with researchers as a part of that network. But we're very interested in both sort of establishing standards of what does it mean to curate data, but then recognizing that, of course, that doesn't just magically happen. People need training and um, exposure and connection to the tools and resources to really make that work. And so producing that training and those tools and resources is something that we're planning to do as part of the network. And I can see translating that into connections with researchers, you know, at your local institution. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks.